What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. So guess what? Today we're going to be doing a celebrity haircut. We're going to do the Harry Styles haircut. I'm really excited to share this with you. I want to break it down. I'm not only going to show you guys how to do the cut, I'm going to show you guys my favorite tool that I like to do it with. And then also I'm going to show you guys my favorite products to style it with at the very end. So I think all of you guys can get something out of this haircut. Before we get into this cut, this look, I want to share with you guys something that's coming up at Free Salon Education that I'm very excited about. Uh, January 2020, we're launching a brand new styluslocator.com website. Uh, this is going to be those of you guys that don't do hair that watch this channel and are looking for a talented hairstylist. We're going to have uh, a website where stylists can go on there, train, watch our videos, learn, and then also have a profile that you guys as customers can go on there and search their profiles, send them messages. And it's really just going to be a great connection between you as a client or you as a hairdresser and getting new clients. That's the goal. Um, that's going to be coming out in 2020. So I'm really excited about it. If you want to get more information on that website, all you have to do is go to stylistlocator.com and then just fill out the little email form and we'll keep you updated. As soon as the site launches, you'll get an email and uh, you can go on there, sign up. As a customer, you can also create a profile and it's just gonna be a really, really cool connection between the hairstylist and the customer. And that's what it's all about. Probably the number one question that I get sent to my direct messages or to my private messages, my email, whatever it is, is people asking either where I cut hair or if I know someone that is good at cutting hair. So what I wanted to do is build a website that builds that connection. So people that watch these videos or other videos that other companies put into the portal, uh, they can train through those videos and then a the customer can have that connection. So if they like this Harry Styles haircut, for instance, you'll know that the hairdressers that are on that thing have access to that video, can watch it, and you could send them a message and talk about it and then book an appointment with that stylist. So I'm really, really excited for January just coming up only a few weeks away. The website should be uh, at least in its first version, able for you guys to start building your profiles and getting started. Uh, but I'm really excited about it. So go check out stylistlocator.com. Whether you're a stylist or a customer, fill out the form so you know when we launch and you guys can start connecting together. All right, guys. So on to the Harry Styles haircut for 2019 fall. So basically what I did was I went to Instagram. I go to the search. I click. I type in Harry Styles. And this is something that if a customer were to come in and they were asking for the Harry Styles haircut, going to Instagram and not to Google is sometimes the best thing to do because if they're looking for the current style, I don't know if Google is showing me the right one, the most current one, if it's if it's coming from a magazine article and you don't look at the date. So just knowing that you can go through there and you can also look at all of the more natural looks of it, right? So I think the challenge that we have as hairdressers is clients bring in a picture, it's on the cover of Glamour magazine and they say they want that hair and that hair isn't realistic. It's Photoshopped, it's edited. They spent five hours getting it right and then they took the picture, right? So going on to that celebrity, even if they show you a picture from Glamour magazine, Go on to that celebrity's Instagram and start looking at some real photos of what their hair really looks like and see if that's actually what the customer wants that's sitting in your chair. So I go through here. I picked uh, a couple pictures. This is the one that I based what the haircut's going to look like on. So I looked at where he parts his hair, the texture that's in the haircut, the wave that's in there, the style look of it, um, the, the product that I thought was used. And then that's how I create the, the end result, the, the mimic style that we're going to do today on our doll head, our mannequin, uh, just to show you guys educationally how I would do it. So I hope you guys are as excited to watch this video as I am to make it. Uh, thank you guys so much for being a part of the channel. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that already. And um, let's get started. Here we go. All right, guys, so I'm super excited to break down this haircut for you. We're going to start off by the uh, going through the sectioning. Sectioning is pretty simple. It's parietal ridge following the curve of the head back to mid crown, cross mid crown with a slight curve to that line as well. And then this is where it's going to change up. Normally, I would probably go parietal ridge over, keep the sectioning symmetrical. But because it's a side parting, uh, I'm going to follow that part all the way down. So the left hand side has a part. The right hand side is right on parietal ridge. So it sits that rectangle shape just a little bit off balance on the haircut. But what that's going to do is in turn in the very end is going to give us a balanced feel to the haircut. So uh, I'll go more into that later on. So now we're going to use the carving comb for this haircut. It's a razor with a 100% cutting side and a 50% cutting side. I'll get more into that later as well. Um, 
the sectioning is pretty simple. We're working the round of the head uh, following back. I'm working on the heavy side first. So what I want to do is I want to remove a little extra weight from that top part of the section because I'm trying to take some of that weight out of the haircut and I'm working the razor with a medium stroke back and forth. And what I, the reason I'm doing that is because that's going to give us the softest line. The thing about this haircut that I like so much is the texture that is put into it. So um, as I go through, you get more texture the more you move that razor. Now my sectioning is following or my partings are following the round of the head. So just notice how um, I kind of dip around. Uh, I'm not building any length towards the bottom. Everything is being cut at about the same length at this point. I'm just allowing the head shape to kind of create um, the the weight distribution in the haircut, the density. So uh, towards that top part where the parting is on the parietal ridge, you're gonna see that I get a little bit of a weight line and that's because basically the elevation, not the length that I'm cutting the hair, but the elevation that I'm holding it. So um, as I go through, you just wanna be aware that towards that uh, parietal ridge, if you're too low with your elevation, you're gonna get too much weight and then when that top part falls over it, it's gonna be very, very bulky. So just uh, be aware of that as you go through. Now in this cut, I just go back to that back corner and then I pause and I go to the opposite side. Now we're gonna work the part side. I don't go all the way through the back. I'm gonna finish the back at the very end. So same thing here. Now I'm gonna go a little bit longer up no near that part line. So now we're gonna get even a heavier weight line um, because I want this haircut to sit balanced. And if you've got a heavy side and you've got a weak side, you wanna go a little bit longer on the weak side and that's gonna give you balance within the density of the haircut. So keep working diagonal back uh, throughout the haircut. And I'm gonna do that same thing that I did on the opposite side and just work my way through to that back corner. So if you guys are paying close attention, which you should be, um, you'll notice that on the left hand side, I'm combing the hair differently than I did on the right hand side. Now, I'm not actually combing it differently. My just my technique to do it is different, but the way I'm pushing the hair is the exact same. So I'm pushing the hair towards the front of the head. I'm pushing the hair towards the guideline. I never want to take the guideline and pull it back to the new hair because that's going to make me cut the new hair shorter. Right. So I've talked about that a lot. If you guys are longtime subscribers, you definitely have heard me say that. If you're just new to the channel, it might be your first time, but keep that thought in your mind as you go through and do a haircut because you always want to push the new hair towards the guideline so you can use that guideline for what it is, what its purpose is. Uh, the other thing about the carving comb that I love so much is that it is a comb. It's two different razors. So not only can you use the two different razors and you have a comb, now it frees up your hands so that you could have a pair of scissors in your hand as well. Uh, that's something that I don't personally do that often. I have done it, but I've seen people do it and they like it for that reason. And that's the reason that the carving comb was kind of invented. So you could have every tool in your hand at the same time. For me, I have my favorite combs and I like to use them that way. But when I'm using the carving comb, I like the convenience of that. This is also the 50% carve side. You'll notice I just went in there and I combed through the hair with the 50% carve and that takes out 50% of the hair, adds some texture, takes out some weight. It's really awesome. Uh, as I move through the back here, you'll see diagonal forward partings um, and just gliding that razor through. The quality of the razor blade that's in these carving combs is my favorite part. It allows you to just slide the the blade over the hair it's a really strong blade unlike a lot of other razors so for 39.95 or whatever it is on freesoneducation.com it's it's really a steal in the fact that it's a good quality tool that you can use over and over again so notice my elevation as i move up the head it stays nice and low and then i'm going to go in 50 percent carved side right on the corner edge of the nape and just carve through a little bit of 100 percent just adding some of those details and then I'm going to work the same thing diagonal forward partings up the head shape on the right hand side. Now notice as I go up the head uh, right now I'm at about 90 degrees straight out from the head but then as I work up the head I'm going to keep pulling out towards my body and the head's going to start to move away from me. So the curve of the head moves away. That's going to help me build up some weight and kind of build a shape that, that mimics what the head shape is, gives it a real nice natural feel. Some people go too high up on the head, too many layers, and you lose that shape of the head in the back. So again, I'll go through with that 50% carve and just kind of work the nape 
and add that texture. Now we're gonna work the top. The top is so simple. Uh, when you're using a razor, the hot, heavier the stroke, notice how big the stroke is now that I'm going through with, the heavier the stroke, the more layers you create, the more weight you take out and the more texture you create. So you don't always have to elevate the hair completely. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you guys um, a trick that I'm gonna do. So we'll go through this 50% carve. So I just break the section in half, 50% carve, take out some weight. And now I'm gonna show you guys a little point cutting technique that we do with the razor. Because it cuts on both sides, you lift it up, you bend your fingers and you move that blade back and forth on your hand and it cuts the hair and just adds some more texture and pieciness to it. So really, really fun technique to do with this. Uh, it's unique, uh, throws hair all over the place and uh, it's just a pretty cool way to use the razor. So now we'll finish that up. I'll work all the way around the head, uh, just kind of following the curve of the head. This isn't so much a structure thing, it's more of a texture thing. So I like to go through and just add that texture. And now we're gonna finish the cut with Maverick. Uh, this is the original pomade. It's got a really, really nice hold. If you like that kind of sleek, wet kind of look to your hair, um, I put it in the 80% dry, um, damp hair and work it through and then I'll grab a little bit more and I'll work that through. I try not to do too much on my hand at once. I think that's a tip that a lot of people could uh, take with them is that you don't have to put all the product you're gonna use on your hand right away. Work a little bit through, add a little bit more to your hand. Comb it through, add a little bit more to your hand. That way you're not getting too much product in one part of the head. So I brush it through, I work through the style and you can see how it's coming together. I love this style, love the look of it. Hope you guys like it too. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. See that texture popping through, just love it. Uh, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.